to Rick Scale Model Fix and another brand new kit review. This time we're going to be looking at Kinetic Models Gold 148 scale F16D. Now they market this as a block 30, 40 and 50 of the United States Air Force. And to say that a two seat modern tooled F16 is long overdue would be an understatement as the Hasegawa kit is well past its sell by date now, nearly 30 plus years old. Lacking in detail but still builds up quite reasonably. So let's see what Kinetic bring to the table. Um, having built their F16C, and their MLU boxings, these are pretty good kits and go together quite well. So it's clear that Kinetic plan to bring us a whole family of F16s which can't be a bad thing. So without further ado let's do the box top tour. So on the box lid we've got some rather fetching artwork there of two F-16s in flight, both two-seaters. We've got the usual uh, company blurb on the box, so we've got the scale, decals printed by Cartograph and designed by Fighter Town, and it's Magfire compatible. We've yet to see those from Kinetic. Your kit number for this one is 48105. So just taking a look at the box side, we've got some blurb generic features about the aircraft, some photos of the prototype model and the model features which are positional flaps and slats, new engraving technology for crisp panel line and laser engraving for super detail, full detail cockpit full intake, super detail main landing gear nose landing gear bay, compatible with a magfire magnetic firepower, kinetics interchangeable modern weapons set, we've not seen those yet. Weapons included in the box says fuel tanks, AIM 9X, AIM 120s, AIM 7X, GBU 12s, GBU 49s, 24s, 31s and 38s and a couple of targeting pods there. And on the other side of the box we've got three marking options that are included in the kit none of which are really over exciting a um, bit of a letdown compared to the boxings of the MLU and the C versions that were before this. So let's lift the lid, see what we get inside. So lifting the lid, and we get to see the contents inside. So there we have the two seat sprue in the cockpit. We have by first examinations General Electric and Pratt and Whitney engines with both the large and small mouth intake. We have the larger two seat canopy but it's interesting to see that there's also the single seater canopy included on there and these are going to be the generic sprues so there's the undersurface wings those two rear sections of the fuselage and then we have a few sprues back together which are wheels and weapons other bits and pieces seat and targeting pots instruction book which is Kinetic's normal photocopy so we'll have a look at through that and there's that small decal sheet and the one for the weapons and markings so let's take a look through the instruction booklet so we've got the box top artwork replicated there and these are just photocopies so inside page 2 we've got the parts map so it'll be interesting to see what these compare to the single seat boxings and indeed we've got the main parts listed on there and the part codes so it'll be interesting to have a look at how they've tackled the large mouth and the different intakes paint cross reference so we've got Vallejo, Mr Colour, Tamiya and Humbrol and it's saying for colour profile please go to www.kineticmodel.com Download the kit number and go for manual and painting guide. So construction starts in stage one and we've got the two seat cockpit tub coming together with the side consoles and these are provided as decals. Hopefully we've got some raised details on there. All bulkheads, flat control joysticks and control columns coming in along with the instrument panels in the little section to the right. Step two is the intake, step three is the main gear bay 
So this is just mirroring the single seat version identically, I think, pretty much. We've got more details coming into that main gear bay there, the bottom of page four. Page five, we have, the, this is the difference between the single seat kits is that we've got the general electric engine included and it does build up in a similar sort of way with separate petals and then we've got the intake parts exactly the same as the single seat version it doesn't say at this point what those parts are so you're going to have to be careful on the sprues just to make sure that you do get the large or small mouth intake parts relevant to the model and the engine that you're building it's interesting to note unless we turn the page there's no reference to the Pratt & Whitney engine cockpit tub being inserted into the front of the fuselage and again we've got the drop-in panels that need filling and eradicating completely depending on the airframe that you're building so again with F-16s there's a myriad of different panel fits and things so it's always worth getting online reference or a photo of the aircraft that you want to build same for blocks 30s and 40s you've got to remove the IFF aerials or the bird slices from the nose and then the intake coming in in stage 10 bottom of page 6 quite straightforward identical to the single seat build front and rear fuselage hat sections coming together in stage 12 with the combings for the instrument panels and hoods this joint is nothing to be fearful of and it'll be interesting to see if this fit is as good as the single seat one Stage 13, some lumps and bumps and the under wing sections and nose panels come in together. And then it's on with more of the underside. So we've got some more details there for the main gear bay and the belly plate. Engine plate and that completed engine going in. Just be mindful of getting these the right way around. Kinetic have just done a little focused view there to uh, remind you. Nav lights, pitot tubes, and then it's onto the undercarriage doors and the nose gear leg. So this is again where you need to follow the instructions because it says do not install parts G21 and D52 for block 30. So on the block 30s they had the lightweight gear with the landing lights and taxi lights mounted on the gear struts. Um, with the advent of the 40s and 50s with the wide heavyweight gear that obscured the view of the landing light so it was moved to the inside of the nose door so just pay attention there as well just builds up this can be added at the end of the build nose gear door going on finishes that assembly and then we've got nine, stage 19 depending on the block of the aircraft that you're building you need to either install the lightweight landing gear for the block 30 or the heavyweight landing gear for the block 40 and 50s Again, make sure you get the correct tyres and wheels. They are highlighted in the instructions here. Some more lumps and bumps being added. Retraction, retraction jacks and actuators. Gear doors being repeated left and right. Ventral strakes in 23 and then it's on for the canopy. So we've got two well detailed ACES 2 ejector seats. Some kind of internal canopy framing. The canopy can actually be posed open or closed. Radome in two parts, can display the radar if you wish. Turning the page and it's onto the tail. Now with this being the US, the US Air Force boxing this is quite straightforward but please bear in mind if you're looking at building other decal examples that the tails of these aircrafts did vary from operator to operator and I think going back and casting my mind back to the C if they're included in the kit pretty much build any version of this tail arrangement seen on the Falcon. Stabilizers coming in and the flaps it's simply click off the ones the positioning tabs that you don't want to position the flaps that you do want and it was interesting to say on the blurb on the original box side that the slats were posable but it doesn't look as though they are it looks as though they're molded in and yes, Kinetic have missed the slight upwards canter those in the parked aircraft. P 
Page 14 onwards deals with all the weapons. So we've got triple ejector racks, middle pylons, wing pylons, centerline pylons. We have the wing pylons both early and late. AAQ-13, AAQ-14, targeting pods, AIM-9s, harms, sniper and an AAQ-28, AIM-9Xs, ALQ-184, GBU-31s, AIM-120s, couple of drop tanks, GBU-12s and 49s, GBU-24, so quite a comprehensive weapons fit for the aircraft there. Arm pods included, so they show in where they go on the cheeks and we've got an illustration guide there showing where everything goes and just on the other side you've got the chart showing what can be carried on which hard point. The final pages of the instruction book cover stencils for the weapons and colour call out and also we've got the profiles there of the three marking options included in the kit so we've got block 50 um, the 14th Fighter Squadron 2006, a Block 30, Cannon Air Force Base 2004 from the 523rd Fighter Squadron and a Block 40 from the 35th Fighter Squadron 2006. Left and right po uh, profiles shown and then on the back you have the stencil and data guide there. But no, have I missed that? There's no upper surface camouflage scheme provided. So that's the instruction book. The build seems to be fairly straightforward and mirrors their earlier single seat kits. A full build of which can be seen and be read in the April edition of Scale Aircraft Modeling Magazine. So that's available now. So the small decal sheet printed by Cartograph provides stenciling cockpit instrumentation and the insignia for each of those three aircraft. Not the most colourful, um, but we don't know what Kinetic have got planned for future releases of the kit. And the other sheet is the generic one that's done, designed by Cross Delta, and this is for the weapons included in the kit. All printed very nicely and certainly up to the quality of anything you could get from the aftermarket brigade. So this is sprue H and this deals with the two seat forward fuselage. So interesting to note where the brake, the fuselage seam line is. First impressions is the detail is absolutely astonishing. Certainly as anything as good as I've seen in the manufacturer recently. So hopefully if I hold that up to the light you can see the rivet detail and fine surface detail captured in the plastic. We've got a section that goes behind the canopy, cockpit tub which is well detailed and if your paintings up to scratch should result in a fantastic looking cockpit there. Bulkheads, cockpit combings, inside of the canopy frame, sidewall detail for the rear cockpit some small bits and pieces there as well and instrument panels as well in all quite nice blind side nothing major there is some sidewall detail on the inside of the kit plenty of flashed over holes there for the pylons and weaponry and other bits and pieces having said that they've got flashed over holes there on the upper wing surfaces so I don't know what they could be for that's interesting so these are the two intake and engine parts supplied in the kit so you just need to be mindful that they are different so we have the four part general electric engine can with the wide mouth intake or the large mouth intake on sprue J so this is obviously the add-on for the large mouth intake aircraft that they intend to release and just to make a note there side by side comparison you can see the difference so just bear this in mind if you're building a kit don't just wade in and think oh there's the intake parts and snip them off the sprue otherwise you could have some interesting arrangements with the fit of the parts and then we have the 
bulged main gear door the normal standard main gear doors the intake parts and the Pratt & Whitney engine cans we've got the beefed up landing gear and the normal landing gear there and other associated items to do with the engines and intakes covered on the two sprues just noticed on the inside of the general electric engine unfortunately we do have some ejector pin marks and they are going to be visible so hopefully we can uh, hide those the best we can well there's always a resin aftermarket I'm sure somebody will be coming along with one in the not too distant future clay parts it's the same as the C kit but with the extra gates giving us the large twin seat canopy and there is a seam in the centre that will need removing it is very very fine won't take much so you have the lights and lenses front to the targeting pods navigation lights etc there as well sprue D probably one of the main sprues in the kit and we have a lot of parts on here so we do have the separate fin bases with the extended para brake normal so we can probably go and do the majority of F16 versions from this sprue I've not seen that one before so I'll have to take a look at where that one uh, originates but we have the para brake standard I'm not sure where that one is, I've not seen that one Centerline fuel tank, radome, gun covers and these are the dropping panels that need sanding smooth the latest C type, the A type some of the web, uh, main gear details, nose gear doors, ventral strakes flaps we've got the rudder and that radar, lower sections of the wings bulkheads for the undercarriage and some more instrument panels we to be careful we don't lose the battery there some vents another instrument panel front combing so all in all quite a nice sprue a lot of detail contained in the kit sprue B includes the lower fuselage which is standard to both kits and we've got these two rear sections that include different panel arrangements for the uh, rear end we've got the ADF fin base and the lower sections of the wings on the inside of the blind side we've got some lovely air brake detail depicted but no option to provide those as open on the kit going through some of the smaller sprues we have sprue A that's got a number of targeting pods all nicely presented uh, from experience they go together really well and look the part once made up two sprue F's um, two seats and the kit they build up well two drop tanks for them under the wings associated launch rails and three types of wheel so you'll have the early late and midlife ones other lumps and bumps things like that spotted pylons intake trunking all very nicely presented blindside not with massive ejector pin marks, nothing that's certainly going to show on the finished model. Might just need a little bit of sanding down just to improve the fit. The last couple of sprues are all weaponry, so missiles and laser guided bombs there. Plenty to put under the wings of your F-16. So there we have Kinetics Gold brand new F-16D in 48 scale. One thing to just mention that this is marketed as a 30, 40 or 50 airframe. Quite easy to do an earlier one. If you have a look through the sprues, both both engines are included. Multiple instrument panels are included. So you just need to uh, find your own reference or even probably pick up a copy of the Ray kit and have a look at the instructions there for the parts to be used. Surface detail is as good as anything I've seen from anybody of late. Fit is absolutely perfect. No problems with the build whatsoever. I've recently completed their C model kit. And that can be seen in the April 2023 edition of Scale Aircraft Modeling Magazine. Where there's a multi-page full feature build. 
Overall highly recommended and long overdue to have a new state of the art tooled two seat Falcon. One that I can't wait to get on the bench. Some interesting markings out for these, may end up as an aggressor. So watch this space. So until next time everyone please look after yourselves, stay well and take care.